Imagine people assuming that you're drunk. Imagine it taking time for you to think, but people don't wait for you to say what it is that you want to say. Imagine people assuming that you're incapable of making your own decisions. These are some of the experiences that somebody living with Huntington's disease could face every day. I'm Dr Inga Stewart and I'm a consultant clinical psychologist. The recent coverage within the media has been really positive in upping the profile of Huntington's disease. So we've seen items on the news about the research and we've also seen characters living with Huntington's disease in TV dramas. Some of the storylines have perhaps seemed a bit hopeless at times, but it's really important that we remember that you can live well with Huntington's disease and although there isn't a cure at the moment, we can treat the symptoms. The reality is, is that not many people know much about Huntington's disease and many people may have never even heard of the term. Huntington's disease is also known as HD. HD is a neurodegenerative disease which means that it progressively gets worse. Although most people become symptomatic in their middle ages, there's a small proportion who have a much younger onset, so this is earlier than 20s and that's about 10% of people living with Huntington's disease. You can't catch HD, it is an inherited disease. So somebody has a 50% chance of developing Huntington's disease if one of their parents has Huntington's disease. Somebody who is symptomatic with HD will find that their lives gradually get affected quite significantly. So the symptoms of Huntington's disease can be helpful to think of it as a triangle. So first of all, you've got a movement disorder, you also have cognitive changes, so the way that people um, think, and then also mood changes. The symptom that most people notice first are motor changes, um, and that is in the form of starting off perhaps being a bit unsteady, and sometimes people can be misinterpreted as being drunk because of the way that they are walking around and, and moving about. Cognitively, we might see changes in somebody's executive function, so that's like the captain of the ship the kind of planning and organising, being able to think consequently. We also might see some behavioural changes as um, inhibition that the brain does for us and stopping us from acting on an impulse starts to get affected. So in relation to mood, people might present with symptoms of depression, for example, and anxiety. And this might be linked to all of the things that are happening in their life, perhaps because of the HD, but also because of changes in the brain. When I first started working with people with Huntington's disease, I really enjoyed finding out how people can adapt in order to have really meaningful lives. So there are a number of things that we can do in order to help somebody to live well with Huntington's disease. So firstly, don't make assumptions. So if we see somebody when we're out in public who is unsteady on their feet, it's really important that we don't make assumptions and judgments about them being intoxicated, for example. Secondly, give people time. Delays in communication can feel quite socially awkward, but actually it's really important that you're patient and that you give the person enough time in order to be able to tell you what it is that they want to tell you. Thirdly, never assume that just because somebody can't communicate, they don't understand what's happening around them. In all likelihood, they absolutely do. They're just not able to communicate that to you. HD can affect every aspect of somebody's life. For example, dressing in the morning, if somebody has got a movement disorder and they've also got problems with planning and organising what they're doing and maybe there's also some changes in motivation, then getting dressed in the morning can become very complicated. But there are lots of things that can help. So for example, someone with HD might ask us to support them with a good routine and structure. But it's important that that routine doesn't become rigid and that it's adaptable to the needs of that person on that given day or at that given time. As the disease progresses, then people may need more additional support. Um, and that might be in the form of family carers or perhaps professional carers. What's important is that the individual is supported to live as normal as life as possible, including going to work, doing exercise, seeing friends. So the advice that I would give to somebody who's new to Huntington's disease, so that might be a person with Huntington's disease, it might be a family carer, it might be a professional, is to utilise the organisations out there. 
So for example, the Huntington's Disease Association has a huge amount of information, but also advisors that can provide support. So I hope I've helped you understand a bit more about Huntington's disease and how as a society, we can be a bit more respectful and accepting.